Uh, okay. Well, next. Oh, let's uh. Do backlog. 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 Hey everybody, it's backlog time. It's early in the show, but yay, we know what? Shut up. Uh, this Shut is the part up. of the show where we go through our video game collection, every game we've ever bought, we put into an Excel spreadsheet, and today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we played it. And we were just at a game convention, so games have been added. We are now up to 972. Oh, hell yeah. 847, pretty high on 847. the list. 847. Use a random number generator to pick one. 847, that would be... Mass Effect for the Xbox 360. Mass Effect. Oh, the first one. The first one. We didn't do this? No. Did we do any Mass Effect? We have not done a Mass Effect. Oh. Uh, I tried so hard. Same. So I really tried. We played this game late. Yes. Uh, I got it on clearance at Target. That shows you how late we played it. I don't think the second game would come out yet, but I remember... Uh, it was well after it had originally come out. Yeah. This game had a lot of praise. Everybody was going nuts about it. Yeah, a lot this. of hype over it. I think, was the second one or the third one out? Maybe the third I one might have been out. I don't out. know. No, the third one definitely wasn't out. I don't know if the second game was out or not yet. I heard a lot of great things about this. Yeah. And one of the best things about Mass Effect is in the trilogy... Uh, your save file carries over throughout the three games. Yes. So it kind of incentivizes you to do the story from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I really liked the idea of that. Uh, and I liked the whole idea of like choosing your dialogue options and stuff. And now that seems like a normal thing in like RPGs. Yeah. But uh, this kind of... Uh, uh, I, it wasn't done... It at popularized the, it. Yeah, it was, wasn't done on like this scale before yeah. this was like a major release this was bioware this is um you know there's their spiritual successor the nice of the old republic in a way um it was much right nice of the old republic had uh yeah. dialogue options yeah too. um this was much more action focused than knights of the old republic was this was like um real-time combat instead of turn-based combat yeah um it was bioware's own ip so they can do a lot more with the story and tell a much grander uh militaristic story um People loved this series of games because they felt an attachment to all of the yeah. characters and stuff. Uh, because you really are like making your own story, and there's mm -hmm. depending on your choices, there's different characters that come with you throughout all of the different games. Yeah, and tragic things happen to the characters, and you you fall in love with some of the yeah. characters, like a whole thing. Also, the gameplay people really liked in two and three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so unfortunately i felt obligated to force my way through this game yeah and i did not make it very far me neither look at how bad the camera is we're right in the beginning of the game look at the running <laughs> it's shaking all over the place i well i think in this section like your ship's under attack or like you're no you're it no this is isn't this the citadel isn't this like the oh yeah that is a citadel never mind it's been <laughs> yeah, so long. literally <laughs> just the camera shaking for no reason it's like the gears of war like running well the thing is like the gears of war running that was like a specific action you had to perform mm -hmm. this dude's just doing the regular running <laughs> animation <laughs> It, the the game mechanics were not great in this game. The, so the game is ostensibly a third person cover shooter mm -hmm. with a lot of like heavy RPG elements. Like you you build up your character, your team, uh, your stats. You can specialize in different uh, abilities and functions. Um, the whole thing you could be Paragon or Renegade based on your gameplay actions and specifically your dialogue actions. Uh, you can either be like the savior of humanity or the devil in a sense. But the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is that of a third-person cover shooter. From the early Xbox 360 days. Well, the problem <laughs> is also uh, a third-person cover shooter from the early Xbox 360 days that ran on the Unreal 3 engine was Gears of War. Yeah. And that game was a much better third-person cover shooter. So, like, given the choice between the two, like, I would much rather play Gears of War because it had a more fluid, more streamlined... Now 
third person shooting mechanic. How sure are you that there are cover mechanics in this game? Because this guy refuses to go take cover. I'm pretty sure either had to have been. I feel I, like that might have been in the second game. No. That was, might have been one of the problems with this game. No, there I def I ve I definitely remember like standing standing behind a chest high wall. I remember when Gears after Gears of War came out, I expected third person games yeah. to have cover mechanics right. and a lot of them yeah. did not and I was disappointed. Um this guy's just running and this shooting. This this guy's running and gunning. So the thing that really killed it for me, like I didn't mind the shooting mechanics and yeah. look at all look at this freaking UI. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind the, the the shooting mechanics or whatever my biggest problem was riding around in the car that was everybody's biggest problem with this, this ruined the game for me this was like a lot of people's like the, their low point in the game was riding around in the car mm -hmm. you know i because like you have to land on the planet then you get in the car and then you got to drive around the planet to try and find like you know the hub world or the mission or whatnot and later games just like bypass that completely I kind of get what they were going for because like it does make the universe and the planets you're visiting feel big and expansive. But the problem is, you know, the car controlled like crap. And when there's nothing in the world to like look at or explore other than like, you know, dirt, you know, it's not very interesting. Yeah, no, look at this. Yeah. This is boring as hell. And they yeah. just pop out. You just <laughs> exist outside of the, of yeah. the ship. Yeah. Uh, this also got a lot of flack. One of the memes was the elevator loading screens. Yeah, they so they tried to mask loading screens by um just uh, having you sit in an elevator. Yeah, they were long, <laughs> yeah. long loading screens. Uh, I do know that the Mass Effect uh Legendary Edition, which came out on modern systems, uh, it's all three games in the trilogy. Uh, still has the elevator loading screens, but because it's on an SSD and much better technology, like the loading is instant. So like right. the elevator rides are much shorter than that. That was also on like super duper clearance at Target. And I almost picked it up for nostalgia sake because I'm like, I bought Mass Effect 1 at clearance at Target. Might as well get the whole trilogy on clearance at Target. I didn't because I don't. I don't hate the series. I like the idea of it. I just feel like I was turned off by the poor execution of the first game. What did it for me, the reason why I stopped playing was because I was enjoying like the dialogue trees and stuff, but I got to a point where I was in the middle of a conversation and the dialogue I selected did not reflect what happened on screen. Oh, that also pissed me off. Yeah. There was a lot of times where you'd see like a, like a sentence in the dialogue and you're like, yeah, I want to do that. And then the guy would like get mean. Yeah. Or, or, and you're like, wait, I didn't mean it like that. Well, my specific one, you know, I picked like the Paragon option, the good guy option. And the on-screen action was um, Commander Shepard shot the dude in the head. Yeah. Like, what the what, what was that? Like, <laughs> that happened a lot. In yeah. The, in the, uh, well, not to that extent, but there was a lot of little things where I would pick a dialogue option and what ended up happening was not what I was expecting or intending at yeah. all. And I wish I could go back and fix it because I did not, ex it was, I did not get a good enough read on the situation right. based on the one sentence. Um, that the tone was completely off by what the sentence said. Yeah. And like in your case, you shot the fucking guy in the face. <laughs> um, but that leads to some funny things too. Like the, like, doesn't he punch a girl in the face? Yeah, he punches a reporter, a reporter in the face. face. Yeah, I don't know if that's in this game or a later game. I think it's in the second one. Um, also, what's going on here? He's like invisible, <laughs> like half there. Half yeah, you up. can get like different abilities and stuff. Oh, it's cover. He yeah. took cover. There you go. See, I wasn't. I he wasn't finally crazy. did it. Yeah, this is a game that I think would very much benefit from a remake. I would maybe play a remake of this. I think the Legendary Edition of. Uh, fixed a lot of issues and added a lot of uh gameplay mechanics from the later games back into the first one okay so like the cover shooting is better um i don't know if they streamlined the rpg elements or not but i I know like they they like try to make all the games feel like one complete experience get so, rid of the car yeah well maybe. no the car's still there <laughs> well that sucks yeah um so this is part of a trilogy. Everybody liked the second and third one like a lot. Everyone liked the second one. Okay. Everyone... Nobody liked the end of the third one. Correct. <laughs> People liked the third one, but they hated the ending. Yes. So much so that they patched the ending. Yeah. People still didn't like it. Uh, then uh, Andromeda came out way later. And I had the opportunity to go preview Andromeda. Yeah. I, they, I like flew to like uh, 
uh, San Diego or something to try it because I was uh, working for this YouTube channel that did uh, Bioware and Bethesda games. Yeah. And I don't like Bioware or Bethesda games. <laughs> so for some reason, I was chosen to go check this game out. Mm -hmm. And I had only, at that point, I had only played the first game and I didn't like it. Yeah. So I'm playing Andromeda before the game's out. And I'm like, hey, man, this game's pretty good. Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm like, the first game was not great. Right. This is a massive improvement <laughs> over that. This is awesome. And the game came out and everybody hated it. Yep. Uh, I still think it was pretty good. I still enjoyed what I what I played. Um, so just to clear up, uh, for the Legendary Edition, uh, according to Wikipedia, the Mako, which is the car, um, right. got a got a speed increase and updated physics. So it'll at least handle better than it did in the original. That's, uh, that's not so, enough for me. Yeah. I want to fast forward over <laughs> that stuff. Uh, Edward Bova in the chat uh, brought up a really interesting point. So this game is controversial because you can you can have relationships with your crewmates. You can even have sex with your crewmates. Oh no, was that the issue, that, or was it that uh, you could have gay sex? No, it was just regular, it was just regular, regular, old regular vanilla, sex. Lame heterosexual sex, sex. <laughs> boring vanilla sex, and like yeah, this is like. On like Jeff Keighley had to go on Fox News to defend this game against people who didn't want to hear it. They're just like, there's sex in this game. Children play video games, and you poor Jeff Keighley's like, there's a there's an age rating on it. Like there's an M rated game. You shouldn't let your children play M rated. Yeah, it's games. literally a movie. It's what literally I, like best a movie. I remember of that was he asked the one of the women who was on there who like wrote some dumb book about like oh children protect the children whatnot. He asked her. Have you played the game? And she said, no, of course I haven't played the game. So people who play Mass Effect go to the Amazon page of her book and just like review bomb it. And all they said was, I didn't read the book, but, <laughs> but it offends me greatly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Thank you, Mass Effect, for making sex in games okay, because sex is, is awesome. Okay. Sex is cool, man. I'm glad Responsibly, we're... responsibly, responsibly. I'm glad we're past the point people seem to have a general understanding that video games uh are just another form of media yeah uh i think part of that is that kids these days just playing fortnite yeah they're not playing stuff like this <laughs> um so anyway if this is a hard one to recommend because uh the first game's rough yeah and i don't think the fixes in the legendary edition are gonna do too much for you i mean maybe because like again they also updated combat to make it feel more like this, the next games with aim assist, um, a dedicated melee button, um, boss encounters have been adjusted. Uh, there's more frequent uh, auto saving. So, like, if you do want to try Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect, the Legendary Edition would be the way the go the way to go, and you get the other two. So, yeah, there there is like two months worth of video gaming right there for you. I'd imagine they're all on Game Pass, right? I don't know. So the first Mass Effect game was actually published by Microsoft. Yeah, it was a it was an exclusive. Yeah, but then EA bought BioWare, and BioWare I guess owned the rights to Mass Effect still. So then they slowly trickled it out to other systems. The uh, Legendary Edition is on Game Pass. Okay, it says play with. Controller? Oh, because um, it's probably part of a uh, EA play. Oh, okay. yeah, Electronic Arts. Okay. Yeah. So try it with Game Pass. Uh, at least you can get it for pretty cheap. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's it's not uh, easy to recommend because you got the first game is rough. So if you want to skip the first game, uh, we say that the uh, your save file carries over between them. Yeah. But if you jump in on the second or third game, there's a little cutscene that has you make op like dialogue options uh, that basically creates the story from it's like a it's like a quick little streamlined yeah uh version of the first game i mean basically. also too like the whole big thing is the, you know the character commander shepherd you create commander shepherd uh they can be male or female you can adjust their looks <gasps> to be exactly what you want them to be um and like your commander shepherd carries over from game to game but each game conveniently comes up with a way to like obscure their face in the beginning so that if you 
are just jumping into the second or third one without playing the first one and don't have a character to import, you can just create a character right there. Yeah, so uh, if you do want to just jump into the second or third one, you can. But yeah. uh, if you're cool with just uh, forcing through something for the story, uh, go for it. Again, it's on Game Pass. You can get it for pretty cheap. Uh, thanks for watching. The backlog. We'll see you later. Thanks for uh, coming to a podcast. Thanks for the people who are here watching the podcast. You can see them making a little chat message right here. Bye. Bye.